on uh on OG. <laughs> Always good to bet in theoretical dollars and then you can go into theoretical gambling addiction. <laughs> I, uh, I'm interested to see what build that OD goes for this game as well in terms of items. Oh my, that is a sick morphling win rate. 200. And... That's Might pretty be crazy. Than I have an actual Dota. Want to know? You really should prepare for battle. See how these lanes kind of pan out as well. Is it will be Gabby, Tim's, as well as AU on this ancient apparition coming over bottom, which is no surprise. It is something that we spoke about, and uh, a lane that is probably going to be the most active. Now the question is, are they going to move a anybody down here? Are they going to bring Morphling down here to go up against this? Are they going to keep Morphling top? What matchups are both teams looking for? I think OG are going to be happy with these lanes, the ones they have at the moment. Uh, the Abaddon should just be able to help the Morphling enough in lane that he can out-CS the Batrider. Bot lane's not going to be fun for OG. And the Grimstroke might just look to battle. rotate mid more to try and help the Ember out a little bit. But I, I don't think they can win this bot lane at all. Like, they have to basically just get whatever they can and try and win the other two lanes on OG. That is a high battle pass, Seb. <laughs> what level is he 2,200. Jesus. Spend all the winnings, you know? And on your battle pass. Ooh, they get three runes. Two, from three. TNC. Bounty runes here for TNC. It was two apiece in the previous game, but three this time for TNC. Have the ultimate oh, yeah. advantage in the series. It's really nice about TNC, though. The Sven and the AA just... Knew that he might have been trying to be sneaky to steal. That right, I just actually, Jarek's wrapping all the way around. I'm surprised. I'm wondering what he's trying to accomplish here at the moment. Jarek is just going to look to try and stack up the creep wave, I think, as much as he can. So oh, just because, drag it over. I'll just drag it over and, like, just manipulate the creep wave. Because if this is, like, a static lane in the bot lane, Seb's just going to get absolutely nothing done. Jarek just has to mess with it a little bit. Are you actually taking a lot of damage here from Seb? Wow. Already down quite low, forced to use that salve quite early on. Impel thrown by Tim's as Jarex will try to drag this lane all the way over. He doesn't have stun for another four seconds, but nobody coming to meet him as still Seb's sitting really low and he has to be careful, but no storm hammer for 10 and not enough mana regardless. I'm interested to see whether Thompson does this thing again where he starts to cut the waves. Um, like between the tier one and the tier two mid. I've seen him do this a few times now in different matchups, especially on Ember where he can't get a, a decent lane advantage. Oh, first blood coming out over top as Cuckoo gets the kill here on Asakshka and using that sticky napalm to just do, you know, add on to that and, and, and make it uncomfortable for the Abaddon to grab that first blood and unable to do anything to help him out, really. I'll be honest, this top lane is now an absolute disaster. For one, that probably shouldn't happen, right? But two, this Cuckoo's going to get level three before the morph. You can basically just start running him down. Like you really need to bully this Batrider out in the early levels to help your morph gain some kind of advantage. And if morph gains a level advantage over the offlaner, he usually just wins that kind of like 1v1. And immediately you see him go in for Ana, but bottom, take a look here. Jarak's in a little bit of trouble. And we'll get stunned up by the Storm Hammer, and Gabby will grab a kill, so... Similar to the start that we saw in game one, where it was three straight kills for TNC, and then OG, they got three straight kills, and you know how the rest happened. So trying to keep him, like, Jarex alive with purification, but just was not enough as they were able to lock him down continuously. More with that storm hammer, and again, oh, yeah. Inkswell bottom again. Seb, this time taken out, and it's a third kill here for TNC early on. Really good job of just locking him in, and that was the try lane we were talking about that seemed to be effective. When you've got Storm Hammer, Cold Feet, and an Impale to work with, you, you need to be careful on OG, and this is now both outer lanes. Uh, 
uh, struggling for OG. It's such a strong try. Was that a suicide by Tim's? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Pops is getting really low mid as well, getting bullied by this OD. This is a matchup that we talked about. I mean, he's getting more Radiant than I thought he would in this mid lane, but it's getting to the point now where Odie gets like this level, almost level five mark, and he really starts to bully the uh, Ember out the lane, where the Ember really starts to struggle. Kuku doing a lot of damage over top and disrupting this top lane so much. It's been a struggle for OG on both these side lanes, and like you're saying, also over mid. Where, where Thompson's struggling on this Ember. The best thing though is at least for Anna on, on the Morphling, he's getting a decent amount from this lane. Like, he's he's having almost free farm, you'd oh say. Oh boy, but... Cuckoo. Coming over to help out Armel and oops, I'm missing chains, but unable to get out. And another kill here for TNC in the first kill over mid. Black seeing this back to pick up a bottle as well. He's, he knows that his only not going to be going for one. Stroke so. of feet. On the AU set, chasing down the Ancient Apparition. Now the Ink Swell placed on him, but they've got the Impale. He's still trying to chase onto the Ancient Apparition, and Derek ultimately gets that kill onto the AA. Gabby, yeah, meanwhile, he's got Storm Hammer in a Ooh. second. So let's see if they try to stack the stuns with Ancient Apparition coming back. The chilling touch, Impale, Cold Feet, Storm Hammer, putting it all together. He. Oh, Grace, and he's able to survive. He almost froze over there. That was a moment before he was gonna freeze over, and now Tims might be in trouble. Inkswell stuns him up, Seb right clicking, and we'll get the kill here onto Tim. So, even stacking up all those stuns Ooh. is all oh, cabby. It's as well. It's <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the problem is down here, right, that with the AA, the cold feet would normally be so reliable with these two suns, but because of the Omni Knight, like you saw, all of a sudden, this Heavenly Grace just takes off the potential for the extra lockdown from the cold feet. And he's level four now. Like, if you're playing this trial and you really want to be bullying the, the Omni Knight enough so that the Svenkin game some kind of an advantage in the lane so that he can then just, like, deal with the Omni Knight by himself and free up the Nyx and the AA to kind of roam around a little bit more afterwards. But it's not worked out like that. Mid as well. Oh, God. That's the, uh, the first sanity. Up top is I saw Morphling go down to one health for a moment. Meanwhile, bottom Seb again. He's now stunned by the impale. They've got the Abaddon to help out though. They don't have the green stroke here. As three heroes at bottom, I feel like OG could have capitalized on that aggression from TNC. But Spike Carapace purification coming out, and now Seb without any map. Uh Thompson is a level and a half behind the OD. Uh, from Armel. I mean, he is destroying this lane. Like, it is, it is not closed at all. I mean, Toxin's got 14 CS in six minutes, and this is the problem when you... Every game I cast yesterday, when the Ember was picked up in the first phase, the OD was always banned out in the second phase, because they, you know, the teams understood that this matchup was so difficult for the Ember to play. And you're seeing it here, why? Spotted for a moment for coming all the way down for Gabby to get those phase boots. Let's try me try now, and they've left Anna to be by himself, who's now level six, caught up to the bat rider in terms of experience. Let's see if they want to make a move here on a Gabby. Seb still sits so well on mana, but he's got that soul ring. Stun onto the Abaddon. Trying to TP out. Uh, won't be able to turn in OG. That TP from the Abaddon is just right in the face of Nyx. Of course he's going to stun you. Ah, uh, TNC have a 3k net worth advantage already. And we're only 7 minutes into the game. Like this... They're really short. Maybe towards the top lane if you put it onto the... Onto the morphling, you know, he waveforms in. And it's getting, getting a little pressure bit here. Top. Well. A lot of damage being done there, and Thompson feeling uncomfortable as there were two heroes showing over mid. They don't have the TP on Abaddon, so he wouldn't have been able to help. He's without that TP for 30 more seconds. I like what TNC are doing here as well. They've moved the Sven to the jungle because they understand that they both their supports really need level 6. 
So A, starting to farm the bot lane to get some XP. They're just being a little bit more efficient overall. Uh, how they use the map. Try and get as much of it from uh, the jungle, all the lanes as they can. That's one of the best things about the Sven. It doesn't matter how your lane goes, really. You know, when you have these points in Great Cleave, jungle's always there for you. Especially if it gets stacked by your support. Sometimes I mean, we see these heroes with this potential to jungle so well, and you just don't see the stacking that's necessary to be as uh, optimal. He has taken a triple stack on the Sven already, to be fair, so... You know, he's getting something. Bot lane, AA. Being swell. you trying to get out of this one. Turns back and it's just Gabby's here, but... Well, Gabby unable to save the life of this ancient bridge. However, they are converging on this bottom lane. A two-man stun from Tins. The Storm Hammer to follow it up. Look at the kill on a Jarex. And the Abaddon will be able to deny himself, but there's the Sanity's Eclipse being thrown into set. Double kill here for Armel, and TNC continue to roll. Great rotation by Armel there. Uh, you know, you leave Thompson away for, to get a wave, which he desperately needs, but I mean, Armel's getting so much down in that butt lane. He got the Jarax kill, gets the Seb kill as well. What's the sanity? When you're going for this Midas on the OD, you want to get it up as quickly as possible. That means they're going Midas on both the Sven as well Top as the OD. And there's the ink swell. Anna was looking for AU, but we'll come up empty handed. I don't handed. need to be alarmist, but. The Bantoon's about to spawn as well, so. Team's gonna be a little bit careful. Here. Hit with the impel. They've got the OG nearby. Will he that bridge and will TP over the Bat Rider? Jarak's in a really bad spot, but he'll be able to purge off the cold feet, so he won't be frozen over. They've got the silence onto the Bat Rider, continuing to chase. Adaptive Strike comes in, and Cuckoo in no man's land gets caught out. Not only that, they should be able to pick up two bounty runes here over top, and it will end up being two for two as Gabby picks up the bounty runes bottom. Yeah, really nice Phantoms embrace by Jarak there when he TP'd in. Stopped uh, when the Batrider TP'd in, sorry. Stopped him from, you know, really doing anything there. Stun again here on the top. Tops in of Fist trying to remnant it away, but three heroes coming over. There's the chilling touch. Armel with another kill. And this OD, 4 0 in 1 already, has the Midas finished. Two no talismans, a wand and treads looking really good. And this is a problem if you're OG. This Batrider's has gone boots and travel first as well. I mean, the whole TNC, like, the three cores are just being so greedy with their farm. Like, this Batrider's is not rushing blink or anything to make space. It's just, it's just going for it. Like, they're all just farming. So what do you have to do differently if you're OG? You, you know, you're allowing them to get away with getting this Midas on both the Sven as well as the OG. They got the stun here onto the Morph as well as the Ice Blast to follow it up. He'll waveform away. I have the aphotic shield from strange yeah. to say yeah, you can't heal him up with the with the mist coil but you can use the aphotic shield to keep him alive which is nice um it's difficult for og right because their two supports don't really rotate around the map very well now when you play this grimstroke as a four instead of a five it's kind of a little bit lethargic you know he doesn't Dyer's really he's not very mobile when going across the map cuckoo top lane well cuckoo just on the edge of it stroke of fate also gonna miss but they're still looking for Cuckoo, and I think actually Cuckoo's looking for him. Tims comes over, they've got the adaptive strike. Now the soul bind, that locks in on the Tim, so they know there's a second nearby, but they can't really get over to him. They'll get the kill again on the Cuckoo, who gets caught out for a second straight time, and he didn't use that last one. The Cuckoo was fine there, I think, right? But he, he decided to move back to the right again to bump into the morph. I feel like he should have just hung around to the left as long as he could. Let's fall down. This OD is 85 CS in comparison to the Ember's 36. To extreme violence. This is... And look at the net worth difference, too. Double the net worth of the Ember. More than double, actually. You're doing some better NA map. Yeah, I want to carry on my point before as well that... The, uh, although the Abaddon and Grimstroke don't rotate as well, they also have this Omni Knight, which is kind of like another static hero, right? That just wants to sit in a lane and farm a little bit at the start. Oh, Ice Blast on the Maw. Might be in a little bit of trouble as he'll try to run out, but Jerax will end up biting the dust here. Really? Oh, Mel now on a mega kill streak. There's so much net worth on this OD. The, the thing is, right, like, it's, it's nice that you get the kills on the supports here, but for OG, the most important thing is that your morph doesn't die at this point. Because he's your only real saving grace here. Sven has a Midas, like Batrider has BOTs, OD has a Midas. Like all these heroes are just going to scale so well into the mid to late game now. 
Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Goji are so no far behind it. About that such things. There's not much they can do in terms Sorry, of aggression. That Maybe if they put it all together attack. and Radiant's fight as five, they can get a couple attack. of kills here. But if they fight as five and, and that fight goes poorly, that's just going to boost what TNC's got an advantage. Okay, so good thing for OG is OG, uh, sorry, Topson's gone for this build where he just hasn't got any points in Flame Guard, which is going to allow him to actually fight really well early on with this change with the Inkswell. Change. Now Inkswell coming through. They've got the Sovine placed on a RML. The last drone present himself, keep himself alive. Ice Blast coming out onto the Amazon. They've also got the lasso on the Ember. The Saturdays, of course, is going to be dropped. Now Gabby comes into the mix. They get the kill onto the Ember as well as the Abaddon. Two more in a bad spot as Anna, of course, to, ink, uh, of course, to waveform away with the Inkswell on him. He'll turn into the Nyx, get a three-man stun, eat a stun from the real Nyx. And in a lot of trouble trying to get out of this one. Seb trying to keep him alive. Back into the Nyx form. Inkswell on top of Jerax, but unable to do anything as he falls. Seb and Anna back up all the way to the tier one tower, somehow surviving. God Strength gets popped by Gabby looking over at Seb. They've got the stun moving forward, and Tim's looking to summon the Abaddon once again. So he's in a bad spot for the slide of fist, steering chains. And eventually Gabby will get the kill. They will get the deny on the Abaddon, but three heroes dead on OG, and they lost this fight miserably. I mean, Thompson's chains. Maybe get one in return, but there's the vendetta. Slight of fist again. Not going to be enough. Remnants over. Still trying to kill the Abaddon. 15 and health. Chain stuff. He can't yeah. do 15 health of damage, and he will end up losing his life chasing this Abaddon. And on top of it, there's the tips handing it out, making it rain on Thompson with those TI <laughs> shards. And they'll get the kill on the Jerex. 15 to 6, 7,000 net worth leader for TNC. They're gonna get four bounty runes as well on TNC. I mean, this is. This game's just snowballing out of control for OG, unfortunately. Like, this Warpling's here for Lincoln Sphere first, which is nice, but it, it's not going to help him do damage in these fights either, and it feels like that's what they're really lacking, just because Topson's so far behind from the laning stage. Really need you for your Ember to be really strong in this mid game to help make space for this Morphling. It just, it just hasn't happened that way. Must I repeat myself? They are. Up a creek without a paddle right now, for OG. Dyer's top tower has Just fallen. So far ahead. Look at the net worth of this. the OG and the Sven. Blink Dagger already here for Armel. Echo Saber finished off for the Sven. He's going into the BKB. They're they're so ready for these fights right now, and, and with the Midas's boosting them up and these these continual wins and fights boosting them even further ahead of OG. It doesn't feel like OG have much to throw at TMC. Look what OD's got queued up next as well. We talked about it earlier. When this Hex comes out all of a sudden, the game's going to go completely crazy. And it's even the, just the extra int for the Sanity's Eclipse Multiplier as well. Smoked up. They've come over towards bottom. They'll look over at tops and he'll try to rent. And the stun gets missed as well as the Ice Blast. There's a slight of this searing chains. Zed rotates over. They've got four, now five. The wings remnant forward looking for Stuku. At least trying to get the one chains. out of this, but... This is the chains and Stuku is just too fast. How did he miss the chains? He was using Slight of Fist and he was standing right next to the bat. I am... I don't think he got fogged. That's weird. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Look how low the network is out of that. Just getting caught out here. Cuckoo able to do whatever he wants to this, this scream stroke. And there's not much that they can do on the side of OG to, to retort that. His back run is just so fast as well, right? Like, he has got boots of travel, he has drums. Before the drums active have been popped, he's already sitting at 415 moves. Like, nobody from OG can really keep up with that at the moment. And you see what they're doing at the moment? The Omni Knight's just sitting behind the Morphling because Very they need a nice. purge available just in case Anna gets gone on. Structures are fortified. Not easy, Froji. Five heroes here over towards oh. top of the blink forward, and he's got the Astro Imprisonment as well as the Ice Blast setting it up with the Impale and a very dead Topson, and they'll line it up with the Storm Hammer and continually just hand out tips. Dyer's top tower is being attacked like.
like that. Yes, Nobody's been killed. Oh, this guy has full chill, man. Tim's is right under Seb, while four heroes are here for TNC, but they are starting to rotate over towards this Omni Knight. They've set up the vision, they'll look to get another kill here. The last one with the Blink Astro Imprisonment. This time, Tim's moving forward with a Vendetta looking over at Seb. They start to converge, but this seems to be a little bit too slow. Stormhammer, Ink Swell, the damage from Gabby. They've gotten the stun as well as the Silence, and they're trying to do as much damage as he can here. He's doing here by the Abaddon, and Gabby just in no man's land. He takes one before he dies, but that is a seven times streak going in the way of the Morphin. He will buy out of the BKB before he falls. Yeah. Oh, at least they get the Spike Throw though, right? That's such a, yeah. a massive kill for Anna in terms of gold. This Just... Lincoln's first. Going into what looks to be Ubley next, but he's the Eagle Song and then the, the BKB left for his full build or what he's looking at for right now. He's just picked up the Ghost Scepter. They're gonna smoke up. There's smoke from OG. Trying to play aggressive off that kill on the Sven, knowing that he's not gonna be around potentially over bottom. I mean, this... As long as Tim's just hangs around in the trees here, like, OG aren't really gonna get anything from this. Oh, Gabby's coming over, actually. Way again, Ice Blast setting it up and might be very dead. In Slight of Fist, he's got the Remnant trying to get away, but the rest of TNC are here to get the kill. The look over in the Abaddon, they'll continue to give chase. The Soulbind is thrown at the Batrider and the OD. Anna trying to do all he can to save his Abaddon, who's actually buying a little bit of a time Gabby for his inevitable death. Well. Gabby on the back on with the BKB being popped. They'll finally look over at the Abaddon, who will Ooh. deny himself after all that hard work from TNC. Like the Ember's effectively just not a hero at this point, right? Like, he, it's his job that he basically has to just keep cutting creep waves and just sacrificing himself so that Anna can have the space to farm. When you're this far behind, uh, this far behind, you just don't have any of the map to work with. So Anna needs whatever space OG have, because he's the only way that they're going to come back into this game. You know, when that E-Blade comes online, maybe he gets some kills onto the AA in the back line. You know, hate, uh, help his team stop dying to the... All their eggs in one bar. He's going to have to just play really sacrificial now and just play the lanes. If given enough time, do you think Anna can pull it out all by himself? Or not all by himself, but with how far behind Thompson is, feels like it would be all by him. Meanwhile, oh dear. got the fight carapace. Anna's turned into the Nyx, though. Remnant forward looking for the Nyx Assassin. They've got the Searing Chains onto the Sven. They'll get the kill. They'll look over at Gabby. The Storm Ember gets thrown here at Sashka. And they'll pop the BKB to TP out. I feel like Roach has to... Yo, I feel like these, these kind of like one-for-one -one trades are so bad in TNC. They just have to make sure they're not giving away anything for free. They're trying for Cuckoo, and he works into the Nyx Assassin, Spike Carapace. That'll lock the Batrider in place. They've got the Ink Swell, too. And one more shot. Topson will get the kill, and much needed gold going his way. Like, th this works for TNC at the start of the game, right? Where you have these three cores that are all being greedy, but it's getting to the point of the game now where the they need to start playing in pairs and in threes on TNC side, you know, if they're not five all the time. Got to be a little bit more careful here. Hex finished on Armel. They've got 12,000 net worth lead. A lot of padding, a lot of comfort at the moment. To see if OG can start to pull it back, but TNC definitely was postured and in the TN and in, in the driver's seat of this game. Hobson can afford a javelin. This is a big moment for him. You've got to make the most of it here. <laughs> Poor guy. Been a rough game. One, seven, and six. And seven deaths. A lot of them happening during the laning phase as well. Over mid, he just got absolutely walloped by Armel. I mean, this is the problem, though. If you, this is the problem if you pick the Ember up in the early stages of the draft. 
uh, it's like not towards right towards the end that it, it does have this option to be counterpicked and like i said everybody else was banning out od yesterday oh, og just decided they didn't want Looking over at Jarax, they've got the Yule, the look for the stun, the impale will land, the right quick's coming through, they've also got the lasso, that'll hit on a tops, and there's the two-man ice blast, the OT's gonna be popped here by Seth, look at the gun of Jarax, he'll rend it away, trying to get out of the hands of TNC, into the hands of Armel, ends up going down to Cuckoo, the BKB's been popped by Gabby, and Anna forced to wave for him even further away to disengage, they lose two once again, TNC, overwhelming OG, and doing it with E. Do they want to go Roche here, or one of the Gabby's stuck in trees? Okay, just chilling, man. Being the ward, or playing RTZ, it's fine. <laughs> ward here as well for off of OG. Feels so sad. They need every bit of information they can in these fights to be able to have any chance of winning them. If you, uh, if anybody in Twitch chat wants to know what it's like to play position five in a game like this, just look at what the Abaddon's items are. Not to mention that the ancient apparition <laughs> at 3,400 net worth has about five times the net worth of the Abaddon. That is uh, the rough life of what feels like a position six. Oh, she was like. They're like, oh, how do you fancy standing in today? Because, you know, No-Tail's not well, so we really need you. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure. I can't wait for this really fun and interactive gameplay with my team. And he's like, 24 minutes into the game, he's got 600 net worth as Abaddon. He's like, this isn't what I signed up for, guys. Peace. <laughs> Come on. Damage. is smoked up. Uh, looks like they're not going to so be able to OG. hit anything. Can OG sneak this Roche right now? They even yeah, try I to sneak this Roche right now? That would be risky. Both teams were just smoking for the bounty ring spawns. Like, they're just mirroring each other's movements. TNC were expecting, like, one person to be down in the bot lane to pick up the bounties, but OG just happy with the five man getting two bounty rings top. In all TNC, they look so good this game. Such a turnover from last game. In a game that they look good in, but this is far and beyond what we saw in the last game. Yeah. Uh, when, the way they when Gabby gets to stateless as well on the spend, he's going to absolutely destroying falls. Like, I don't think anybody on the OG side can like live up to that uh, damage coming up from the spend. They have this Abaddon and the the Omni Light to save them, so that's going to be key. You know, can you use this Guardian Angel effectively? And he's going for the Halb with Nexus Sev as well. He's really going to help against the uh, OD and the spend. Oh, Tim's. There it is. He came over at the right attack. time to stop that TP. Not in a good way. But now they're, so. they're gonna go. And Thompson's committed back over. The E-Boy gets Radiant thrown and everybody's starting to show up for TNC. They've got Seb. It's Might want to try and get out of this one. He'll morph into this Nyx Assassin and impale the team as an attack. original man. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They get out of that unscathed. But that that's a close call right there for OG. It's really scary as well for OG, right? But this OG is really close to BKB. And Armel's been playing so well this game. When he gets that online, but all of a sudden this E-Blade on the morph can't even do anything to the OD anymore. Like, he's going to be completely untouchable in that BKB duration. Oh, Impel, God strength. Ice I'm Blast there. coming in. And Seb's going to end up dying. He's a lot of the same here for OG. And then Thompson, he's the victim next. We're actually surviving. Gets to the back lines. I thought he might be dead. They end up taking Jerax instead. But oh, there's the spike carapace. Down goes the Abaddon. Sanity's Eclipse blowing up Anna, who fires back immediately with three heroes. Yeah, as soon as Sev dies first in that fight, it, the fight's all TNC. They just wipe through them. We talked about that Guardian Angel being really key against the Sven, and unfortunately, without it being there, yeah, that was a really good catch from TNC. Exactly the way you want to start the fight for them. Yeah, just perfect play from TNC there. They're, they're playing it so well. They've been playing it so well the entire game. 21,000 net worth lead. They they went for Seb. They knew to get him first. He's a lot of the, the sustainability on the side of OG. And what... I mean, is OG even a, realistically have any team fight without, without the Omni? 
no is there a straight answer to that i mean it it it's pretty difficult to get the catch that you want right when you're playing against these two defensive heroes uh, in the abaddon and the omni knight because technically if one of them gets gone on the other one should be able to save the other right but TNC have so much damage between their two cores. They have decent amounts of control as well. Like, they've got the Sven stun, the Lasso, the Nyx stuns, the Hex on the OD, and they're all coming from different sources. Like, they're reliant on one hero for this lockdown. Trying to go for this Roche, but there's the Ice Blast as well. The BKB is going to be popped here by yeah, RML. Like, they go into the Abaddon, they'll look over at Tip, they'll get the kill, and now, like we were just talking about, without Seb, are they even really a team? They try to get the kill here onto Cuckoo. They will finally find one. Jarex running away from Armel, who is silenced for the moment. But while that's happening, Anna will be taking a ride against the TNC squad, trying to survive. Gets impaled. Armel finally finishes off Jarex, who yeah, does get so it's bad, but uh, uh, <laughs> surviving, but eventually hexed. Armel right clicking away the waveform out of the low ground. The TP attempt, the Lincoln's popped in, gets away. Woo. Yeah, Sven couldn't get down to the low ground. Unfortunately, the Lincoln's cancelled out the Astro Imprisonment from the, o from the OD as well, but unfortunately, yeah, the Spence are not there in time. They are going to get the Roche for themselves, at least on TNC. Like, it's still a good fight from them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they've got control of the Roche bit now. They'll take the first Roche of the game, get themselves the Aegis, and up, up by so much. I mean, it's almost like they're playing with their food. passes into history. I mean, OG understand that the only way they come back into this game is by doing really, you know, crazy things. They're so far behind, they have to make plays. So they go for that Roche. You know, unfortunately, it doesn't work. But yeah, again, if Seb dies at the start of the fight, there's no chance that OG have of winning it. And I. Runes. On to our mill. They are nearby. They're is under attack. here I feel over like at TNC. Wreck. And it looks like they're going to take this last-ditch effort fight over by the bounty rune if need be. I mean, we saw this from OG last time up in the top lane. They got the two bounty runes, and they understand how, you know, how much gold they are. It's really important, especially at this 30-minute mark. I don't know how much gold they are exactly, but... You know, a 2k net worth swing for them would be huge at this point. Only they come over and just do away. The bounty runes are already picked up by TNC, who have full map control. Pops and just kind of waiting here inside the trees. He's going for this Ags if he ever gets it. We'll see <laughs> if he gets the gold for it. It's, uh... Of course, Anna looking for his BKB. So let's, let's, let's play games with Twitch chat. Press 1 if you think he's going to finish the Ags. Press two if you don't think you'll finish the axe. I, I know what I'd go for. With the way this game's been <laughs> played out the at the moment. Die. Oh, he did he sell something on Seb to pick up that halberd? I don't know what he sold, but Fear nothing. He didn't have the gold when I looked a second ago. Silence on our Maelstrok of Faith, then the Remnant behind. They were looking with Tim. They've got the Soulbind, so this is setting up quite nicely for OG. It's the best setup so far, but the two-man sun comes out from Tim. He's got the name on this. He's able to survive the center. His clip is going to be dropped down. Look at the kill on the save. They look over at the Abaddon, getting right clicked by Armel, looking forward for even more. They've got the Yules here on a Jarek. Slight of Fist comes out, but they'll grab another one. Three heroes dead. They'll continue on to the base. Come more into the Nyx Assassin. Pop the Spike Carapace. It'll stun off Tim. Waveform over to the left. There's the E Blade X. Anna trying to survive, trying to make a play happen here with not much help from Thompson. Finally pops the Aegis, so it's something. Anna still alive, but everybody's here. He turns into the snakes again and stuns them off. Can he survive once more? Uh, no, not this time. However, Tim does eventually fall. Thompson gets a kill. It seems like it's his first kill in who knows how long. Hashtag road to axe. Here we go. He's getting close. Yeah, I mean, Armel, he did so much damage in that fight. And you can't see how much in he stole because when you died on the Aegis, you lose all the original int that you had. Uh, yeah, with the Shivas as well. Now has the extra armor just to tank himself up. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Tankiness coming through from TNC. I like that uh, AA's building a spirit vessel, by the way. It would appear Radiant. It's the spirit vessel, but he still needs a spirit vessel, just in case. It was the item that almost replaced his job. 
back when it was first released. Oh, the hex. Swing forward, there's the hex. Thompson getting low and stunned up here by Gabby. They'll throw the ult, but it's a little bit too late to save Thompson. The Soulbind comes in. They've also got the silence as well as Heaven's Halberd on the both these heroes. After imprisonment, staying alive, Seb without any mana. He's got the Abotic Shield on him, and he is quite tanky. The kid is going to be popped here by Armel. He's moving forward. There's the last to get the kill out of Jarek Thompson. Trying to do something, but hexed up. Triple kill for Gabby. Looking for it all. Seb. Still alive, on the Roger Q, the Rampage, give it to him! Oh. Man, Armel, come on! Are you kidding me? Come on! DG is called IOG, TNC, get the game, we're going to a game three. Oh, Gabby manages to get to the secret shop to buy his eight. Heather's big brain play.